All right, let's admit it. If you clicked on the video, you're curious about the EOSM for blogging. Well, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll see that it's actually a viable option. So let's get started. Yo guys, JPR Tech here, and this is a Puerto Rican living in Japan, talking about videography, photography, and all the tech in our life. And in this channel, we try to learn how to squeeze the quality out of all the gear we use in our daily life. And we like to do it for cheap, or better yet, free. And today we're gonna squeeze the quality out of this EOS M. We're gonna see if we can use it for blogging in 2024. And I'm gonna show you the hows and the why. So why don't we start with the how? Well, first thing you need, of course, is the camera, the EOS M, and then you're gonna need a fish eye lens. And it's actually shooting me right now. We got the Make It 7.5 millimeter f2.8 lens, but the best thing is that it's sharp and it's super wide because due to the fisheye lens. Now don't worry, I know fisheye lens has crazy distortion, it makes everything look funny, but with the heavy crop in Magic Lantern that we're gonna have, we're gonna crop off all those distorted areas. It's the Magic Lantern, we're gonna switch over to the one times one mode, uh, 1440p. Now that's gonna crop crazy into our image, into the sensor, but you know what? That's gonna avoid all the more and the aliasing that plugs the one times three and the t three times three modes. We're gonna avoid all that, so we're gonna have some really clean image. What makes this whole setup amazing is that not only are we shooting raw, but also that due to the fisheye lens, we're able to use the cleanest mode in Magic Lantern, the one times one mode, and still fit in the frame like you see me right now. But what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna test this in the field. We're gonna change, I gotta go to work, so, and actually before that, we gotta get some lunch, so why don't I just take you along with this ride, and if you wanna see what this camera can do, just stick around through the whole video, and then at the end, I'll give you another sequence that I'm gonna do in this beautiful park. It's just gonna be an awesome day, so I just wanna take you along with me. So if you wanna go for the ride, let's go. So this is probably the best setup and best setting for blogging on a Canon EOS M with RAW. Uh, it is shooting in the 1440p, but it's very important with such a heavy crop, we need a really wide lens. So I'm using a fisheye lens. Let me tell you guys, one of the advantages of shooting with a manual lens is that it has the markings on the lens, you know, the distance marking, and that makes focusing, pre-focusing so easy especially once you get to know the lens uh, it just becomes a breeze you already know arm's length is about 30 centimeters away when i'm extending away my arm i already know is over 50 to 60 centimeters so i just place it there and that's it you know or i'm uh, sorry if you're in the u.s it's about a foot and a half away just set that measurement on the lens and that's it, we'll be on focus. We don't have to worry about anything. And I love that this Maker lens, the focusing ring, the throw is really nice and it's nice and sturdy, it's really stiff. So it makes focusing fine point or fine focusing really easy. See, I already know 0 0.3 centimeters. It's this distance away, it's my hands away. And the cool thing about a fisheye lens is that I know I'm gonna fit in the screen. And pointing to infinity is just as easy as uh, going back to three meters or more between infinity and three meters, and then close the aperture down to f16. Super easy to pre-focus. We. Look at that weather, amazing. The Sanuki Fuji, that's what we call this mountain. I actually forgot the real name of it. It looks like a Fuji mountain because it's nice and pointy on the top. So that's why we call this mountain Sanuki Fuji. This is the Hanzang area in Kagawa Prefecture. We got some pretty good udon shops here as well. Man, look at that beautiful weather. Okay, so we're about to stop by one of my favorite bakeries. It's called Papaberu. If you're ever in Kagawa, 
or I don't know where else they have a Papaveros, but if you ever go to a Papavero, you have to try their curry bread. The curry bread is the bomb, so let's get some curry pan. Let's do this. There it is. Papa Beru. Wow. Beautiful building. Let's get some nice bread. So let's see what we got. We got the lemon glazed donuts. Their pizzas are actually pretty good. The star of the show. Let's see if we can do this one handed. Bam. The Kare pan, look at that. Woo wee, delish. Can't wait to dig on that. So now that I got two hands, uh, here's a pizza. I can I already know how far this thing can focus. Woo, look. Okay, itadakimasu. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's good pizza. Mmm, mmm, mmm. And here it is, the cutter pound, but to dig in. Mm. Now the thing I love about the cutter pound here is that they have actual meat, real cutter. You can see the carrots, the onions, everything. You can see the ingredients in the sauce. So that's a good cutter. Most cutter pounds will be just like a cream, but this one actually has like meat stuff and vegetables. Mm, 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 mm. 1.30 in the afternoon and this place is still packed. That shows how good this place is. Very popular. And look at this guys. This is why we love Japanese food. They have like fresh ingredients. I don't know if you could see the lemon bits are still in there. Like it has real lemon bits all over the glaze. So it's not just fake lemon flavoring. Man, I'm such a noob. I completely forgot the mount for my gimbal. So I can't shoot with my other lenses, but um, we're gonna have to use a strap and uh, hang on for dear life. Hopefully we can salvage much of the footage and with DaVinci Resolve's uh, stabilization, hopefully we'll get some decent shots. So yeah, sorry about the shake beforehand. I'll just let you know, sorry about the shake.
Okay, it, it is blazing hot. Officially blazing hot. Whew. After doing a lot of b rolls around here in this area. Oh man, did I just smear the lens? Hang on a second. Yeah, I don't know which one is gonna look better. I just, at the end of this whole sequence, I did a, a comparison between 3K and also um, the 1440p, but everything cropping into 16 by now. So it's gonna look like this, you know, like a regular um, monitor screen. This is what it would look like in a 16 by nine. So hopefully the comparison will help me see which one is better to shoot in. Just leave it at 3K and then crop it in post when I want to, or just set it up to 1440p. My gut tells me that 1440p is gonna give us the best resolution, but we'll see. And I'll probably have a voiceover after this to share my conclusion, so. Yeah, thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.